Yeah, this is Ornstein from Mustad Moraine. I'm working today on a NIAID uh, roll stabilizing system for a Johnson uh, 56 powerboat with uh, two big cats in the engine room. So, so I've never worked on one of these before, so it's kind of fun. <laughs> Reminds me of that commercial. I've always wanted to work on a transmission. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the problem with this system is it's been overheating. We, we used it going up the coast, but only it would go for about an hour or so before it gave us an overheating alarm, so we had to shut it down. Uh, these stabilizers are terrific when they're working properly. Two big fins on the side of the boat keep the boat stabilized for the most part. Uh, they do a terrific job, I think better than the uh, gyro stabilized uh, stabilizing systems. Anyway, uh, because of the overheat problem, we couldn't use it, uh, so we had to center the fins, lock them. Um, Yona's been trying to get it fixed ever since. Very difficult to get a mechanic up here, so I volunteered. So, um, first thing to do, um, let's just go through the system here first. All right, so this is, the, this is the big system right here. This is the reservoir tank, also the heat exchanger. Uh, copper coils go down into this tank here. It's filled with uh, super clean hydraulic fluid, which is what you want to keep. <clears throat> uh, here's your pressure gauge. This is the breather cap, also the fill uh, cap for the oil. Uh, these are the hydraulic lines here. You can always tell they're hydraulic lines by their super dutiness. They'll say 3000 PSI on them. All right, so um, the fluid basically moves back and forth uh, based on a switch activated by a brain. And the uh, the plumbing goes forward to the two fins uh, to tease off to both fins. And uh, depending on which way the fluid's moving, the fins react. It's a pretty simple system. The, the brains of it um, are located here and elsewhere. This is mainly the physical end of it. So... Down here, we see these lines running. That's an oil cooler that uh, basically collars over the raw water intake a hose going to the engine. And then it gets its uh, power from the Caterpillar. So on the port engine, um, hard to see here, but underneath the impeller, there's a pump. There's one of the big hoses going to it. Uh, and that pump is what uh, pumps up the pressure in the hydraulic system. All this is here is sort of uh, the switch for which way it pumps, the reservoir and the cooling and so forth. So uh, components are cooler, the pump integrated in the engine, both are actually. And then the, the two lines that run forward to the uh, fins uh, that are underneath the galley forward. Anyway, uh, this is the cooling circuit. So you have cooling water going in and cooling water coming out. The cooling out circuit, this black hose here, uh, goes, uh, integrates into the exhaust system and just goes out the boat. The cooling circuit on the inlet side, supply side, uh, is a black hose as well. And it goes to the heat exchanger on the Caterpillar engine. So as the engine's running, it's pushing the uh, salt water through the system, the raw water system, and part of it comes out of the heat exchanger and goes up here. Now this heat exchanger built into the thing is pretty small, only needs about three to five gallons per uh, minute uh, flow. Uh, so I can't use any kind of heavy-duty uh, pump or air pressure uh, to try to clear it out. So anyway, um, in troubleshooting this, I first disconnected the cooling hoses. And I tried blowing through the circuit here. It was hard to blow through, so it's somewhat clogged. A little bit of air is getting through, but not much. So that's why I'm, I'm uh, flushing that system out. And on the engine side... Um, if I can find the, the hose that I cut, here it is. This was the hose that was on here. I removed it, and then I uh, tried to blow back into the heat exchanger, and I could not blow. So then I just ran the engine and to see if any water squirted out of here, and nothing squirted out. So this thing is totally clogged on the heat exchanger side. So what I did then, um, I came to where it's connected to the heat exchanger, 
And as you can see, uh, I'm trying to remove the fitting. And, uh, well, just a few seconds ago, that was totally clogged. It looked like that. So it, that plug just kind of popped out. So anyway, this hose and this connection here, probably the fitting and maybe something on the inside of the heat exchanger is all gummed up. So I'm going to have to replace this fitting and hose and, um, and then uh, scrounge around on the inside of the heat exchanger to see if there's any further clogging. Because there's gunk and debris in that heat exchanger, what I'm going to do then uh, to prevent a clog occurring here, because once it gets clogged up in those copper, tube, the copper tubing in here, you're done, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a, um, a check valve, if I can find one for this, I'm sure I can, and a small mesh, uh, like a water screen for a fresh water system to catch any debris coming from the heat exchanger. So uh, those two things and a new line, new fitting, uh, I think should work. We'll see. Okay, looks like the only plug was uh, in the fitting itself. Okay, now that I got the heat exchanger side fixed, I got a new fitting on there, fittings, and a new hose on that side. So now I've rigged up uh, an impromptu uh, little uh, flush system because uh, that system there is a low flow, about three to five gallons per hour. So I had to improvise. And again, I got a rule pump, a small maintenance pump, about 300 gallons per hour. So that works out pretty close. And um, the two hoses going in and out, circulating in this bucket. As you can see, there's a pickup and then there's a discharge hose in there. And I rigged up a little wire deal to the uh, battery. And I got my little kill switch here, dead man switch. And here we go. So now you can see the dark stuff coming out of there. And I'm going to pump that stuff through. So first I'm going to empty out the, the crapola. And then I'm going to refill with uh, descaler and water, about a 4 to 1 solution. And then I'm going to run this for at least an hour. Okay, now the system is running. I'm going to leave it running for about an hour. And uh, this is the beginning. Uh, there's a descaler in there, which turned it blue a little bit. A little cloudy already. But uh, now it's just uh, cycling through the heat exchanger. It's good to use clear hoses so you can see movement in there. All right, she's all buttoned up and tested. I think we'll be in good shape here. The cooling circuit is now working on this thing. Uh, we have a check valve right there, and we have a little screen that helps us troubleshoot the system, capture any debris, whatever, from the heat exchanger. And then uh, your in and out circuits right there going to the uh, heat exchanger. So now we're going to take her for a spin and make sure she works. Okay, just getting underway, and uh, we're trying to center these things. So this spin should be right here at the arrow, and just like that one. Uh, it's warming up, pressurizing, so it might take a minute or so for everything to get back uh, in normal shape. I have it in center mode, and uh, that's it. So, uh, we'll see what happens here shortly. Alright, so far so good. So right now we're having to uh, bypass the boat speed uh, indicator uh, to trick out the system and have it activate. Uh, and it is functioning. You see the, the fins moving over here. So what normally should happen is that this system should be linked via uh, NEMA connection to the boat system, uh, the speed, whatever the boat speed is. That way you don't have to do that. So the brain can th think more actively when you're in active mode.
Yeah, I'm here with Randy. Randy, what do you think about the uh, stabilizers? I think they work. You fixed them very well. It's working <laughs> great now. So right now we're going sideways to the sea outside the Golden Gate. And we just turned the stabilizers off. And yeah, we could feel it immediately. So as soon as the stabilizers centered uh, their fins, uh, we feel this, uh, we feel the sea much more um, effectively. All right, let's go ahead and put them back into active mode, please. And you can see they're working. Yeah. Now the fins are fighting every motion. Doesn't make it flat and straight. It's not going to do that, but it's going to take a lot of that tempo out of the roll. And, uh, make it much easier, much more pleasant to, to be on the spout in this kind of seat. Yeah, like right now, for instance, I can really feel the difference. Feel that, Randy? Yeah, that's great. Okay. All right, good. Good test.